This is Breaking Down Security, and I am Brian Brake. Welcome back, listener. This is Brian, Mr. Betcher. Uh, Miss Berlin's not here because uh, we recorded this before the Fourth of July holiday weekend, so she's out having fun with her family. So, um, yeah, this is Brian and Mr. Betcher for Breaking Down Security. Hello, hello. What's going on, man? So Friday before the holiday weekend, right? Yeah, yeah. The holiday being the Fourth of July for U.S. Americans here. For everyone else, it's just Tuesday. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it's nice, but uh, um, <clears throat> so you know, with Miss Berlin gone, of course, you know, big diva that she is with the authoring and the the, the talkings mm-hmm. and the stuff. So we had to find two people to replace her. Um, so we thought we did a fairly decent job. We have uh, uh, you've heard of her on the show before. If you haven't, go back and find the episodes where she uh, filled in uh, for Mister Betcher. Uh, we had Miss uh, Megan Wu uh, at Totenkoff on on Twitter. Welcome, Megan, to the show again. Hi, thanks for having me back. Yes. Um, awesome. So um, we got one other person. I only know him as Rando. I'm sure he has an actual <laughs> name um, and, and he has a Twitter handle. Um, but uh, welcome, Mr. Rando, to the show. <laughs> Dude, I'm so stoked to be here. Uh, AKA, you can call me Danny too. That's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, at, uh, at D A K A C K I. At the. Uh, but yeah, I, my mom actually did give me a regular person's name. Cool. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So um, we'll start with you. Um, give us a little bit about, because, uh, you know, people who've listened to our show, they may not know who you are. Um, give us an idea of, uh, like, your origin story, how you got to be an InfoSec and, and where you, uh, you know, you know what you do. Yeah, absolutely. I always assume nobody knows who the hell I am. That's usually the case. Uh, but no, man, um, I, uh, I actually started in tech a long time ago. I used to be in IT for like 10 years, uh, like help desk and desk side and networking and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I switched over uh, to security about six years ago. Um, cause I just, you know, I, I grew up with hackers. Uh, I, I was, I was one before I even really knew what the word was. Um, and started out, you know, as everybody else does. Um, just, you know, in like a stock and just wanting to know everything about everything. Like it's fire hose opened up. Uh, and, um, I just, I was surrounded by a lot of crazy smart people. And luckily, uh, I still am that kind of fueled my, my fire and it was pretty much off to the races since then. Um, I'm never gonna I hopefully find myself fixing printers ever again, or, you know, installing <laughs> the office for the 8 billion time. Um, but yeah, man, uh, that's uh, like my my actual inner hacker woke up, and now I, I sometimes I bemoan though those ten years, but they actually did a lot of good. Uh, and yeah, it's been really off to the races. I mean, I worked at companies like Mandiant and GE, uh, and a not to be named finance company right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've, I've I've been really really lucky, uh, and mostly because of our of our community, like jobs be damned and titles be damned i just i've met some of the greatest people and, and like the coolest the coolest like men women just whatever uh, uh that i call friends um so i love it uh, i love you guys like you're one of the the top podcasts that that i just really enjoy uh that i'm actually a fan of so, so i'm so excited to be on the, the checks in the mail checks in the mail <laughs> so <laughs> i got a mouth to feed Nice. So for uh, for those of you who don't know Miss uh, Megan, um, please uh, tell people a little bit about yourself as well. Yeah, so um, I guess I started in tech when I was like 14, 13, volunteering at uh, a veterans hospital where my dad did IT and kind of grew up there. They taught me how to do stuff. I ghosted my first machine. That was exciting when I was like 14 years old. And then... Um, after high school, when I finally had a say about where I could and could not travel, uh, I went to my first DEF CON and then just fell in love with the community and the scene. And from then on, I just kept showing up and nobody told me to leave. So (laughs) (laughs) yeah, that's nice. And, uh, and you worked at a fairly well-known vulnerability management company as a trainer. 
it's a it's a tiny company tiny. like you know rapid seven but yeah. and actually i've uh changed jobs since we last spoke i'm what? no longer in training what yeah what are you doing I'm, now so i work in their strategic advisory services team Ooh. which is a fancy i know so fancy Strategery. um strategy so basically we go out to companies and we tell and we uh look at uh their security program look using like the 20 cis critical controls right and then we're like okay so this is where you are and you have a really ugly baby and this is how you have a less ugly baby <laughs> this is how yeah, much it's going to cost baby. you to have a not ugly baby right right then they blanch and they're like right because sometimes like the baby doesn't know how to feed itself and it's just like kind of cockeyed Great. not that there's anything wrong with cockeyed babies i'm sure they're still oh. cute you gotta see <laughs> the baby jerry that's a sign <laughs> yeah. right yeah it's it's yeah. handsome yes <laughs> yeah i mean they're fine but they just have a much lower resale value yeah, exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> danny how'd you hear about the podcast uh through actually through word of mouth and then uh when i met amanda um and then all of a sudden she was uh associated her name with you guys and i mean but i i i'd, I'd heard of you know uh break Suck for a long time now um just by just by the twitterverse man just by awesome. our little twitter yeah. community that, that we have um i keep running into rapid seven people too that's so funny uh, <laughs> it's, it's actually one of your competitors <laughs> Right. Uh, no, I, I love where I live. I love my company. I'm on this podcast. Um, no, it's actually one of your compatriots that gave me the name Miranda. Right. <gasps> Wait, did you say Miranda? No, uh, no. Oh. There's a, uh, did you know uh, Jordan Rogers? Oh my God, Jordan's the best. Dude, Jor Jordan's the one who gave me, <laughs> like, gave me the name Rando. Like, that's oh, how, nice. Like my very first hacker name. That's awesome. Do well in the conversation, but yeah, no, no, I, just, I'm, I, I know a lot of you guys. I'm big fans of you, but uh, yeah, to your question, yeah, that's um, I just you guys got a great rap, and it's you know you see it everywhere. That's cool. I mean, uh, yeah, all that spamming on Twitter is working, uh, working it out. So that that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and free advertising <laughs> just now. Exactly. Woo <laughs> well, yeah, I find uh, that a lot of people heard about us, but they don't make that step into listening, and and it's like sort of a psychological like they're familiar with the podcast they just never heard of it and then somebody says dude you should really check this out and they okay. already know about it so it's it's just a baby step to um to actually listen right yeah. and then at that point they are probably hooked afterwards at least we hope well, yeah we we i actually have a podcast much much smaller i think we have like 10 people per week uh but uh yeah i mean we do our own little thing and uh, and hopefully people, you know, listen and, and, you know, like it. And we actually do video, uh, probably to our detriment. We only have like 10 people we did. What's it called? Uh, Rally Security. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I've yeah. seen your name on the, on the Twitters as well. At Rally Sec with, uh, Ben Heisey and, uh, DA667. Yep. Okay, nice. He just had a book public Don't come out too. He did. Uh, as he was going through it, um, I actually went through it too. Um, we were, I did a little bit of like spot checking for him, not as much as some of the other guys did. Uh, that's an amazing book, by the way. Like, yep. Yep. anybody has a chance to get it, that <laughs> is thirty some dollars, well worth every single penny. Like, it's amazing. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so we just nice. we get together and, and we kick it every week, and um, you know, we just like our big thing is just travel knowledge here, right? Like, like I'm sure you guys, yep. uh, you guys do, just you know talking and spreading knowledge and talking to different people and doing interviews for anybody who wants to come and come talk to us. Yep. <clears throat> awesome. So um, the, the reason we wanted to talk this week was uh, Danny reached out. Uh, actually, I reached out to Danny and asked him if he wanted mm -hmm. to come on our show and talk about some things. Um, and and Miss Berlin actually had done a talk about this as well, about the, the, uh, the mental health of the average information security person. And, um, you know, how we, how we handle us as information security people, how we handle the stresses of our job, um, you know, the, the, the need to be able to cope with 
uh, just our general insecurities because I don't, I don't know I don't know if it's a running gag, but I keep hearing it every time. You know, things like when you go to DefCon or when you go to these things like, "Hey, um, I'll be wearing red shoes because nobody ever looks at each other in the eye." Or, you know, um, we have of course the Infosec echo chamber where you know uh, Infosec appears to be quite varied and diverse as uh, both uh, in people and in the the amount of knowledge that we have, and we have haters who you know, uh, hate on certs versus people who, you know, don't hate on certs. And, you know, uh, we're often our, our own worst enemies where we're all on the same side, except when we're on our own side. And, um, one of the, one of the things that, you know, we, we see a lot, uh, and Danny and, and I'm sure Megan and, and Mr. Betcher and, and Miss Berlin, if she was here, could tell is that we have some peccadilloes that are often self-destructive, uh, behaviors that, um, you know, often need to be brought to light. And, you know, maybe some people who are getting into InfoSec may not know these things and they may be caught up into the whole, you know, uh, environment of, you know, like there's bourbon con, for instance, at DEF CON, you know, and, 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 and Vegas, they call it hacker summer camp, but for some people it's, it's a week long bender where they don't remember, you know the first the the middle of the whole thing and then they wake up on the plane back home and so what we wanted to talk about was uh some of the the coping mechanisms in positive ways that um don't require us to to deal with self-destructive behavior uh the reason we had megan on was she had a whole twitter uh twitter blog for instance she had a whole series of tweets about uh um you know stepping away from infosec uh dealing with burnout and uh, finding hobbies and things outside of InfoSec. So um, maybe we could start with Danny, and he can talk about uh, uh, what he was going to bring to the table with this argument. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, like actually, uh, you had reached out because um, I was supposed to give a talk uh, on this at Circle City. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my son came down with uh, with strep, and I was like, well, that's a no brainer. So I was really bummed about that because uh, those guys at Circle City are awesome. Um, but uh but yeah so like um i i came at this uh or, um, started earlier you know this year like around december or january um for me personally it happened a lot earlier um you know i've been dealing with uh depression for a really really long time um more probably longer than i really realized that i had it and uh it got around defcon last year uh when, when i came back uh I just I something crap like something snapped, uh, and it, the things that I was doing, which is which is this is why this podcast is going to be really awesome, because the things that I was doing to cope with it weren't working anymore. Mm. Um, it, they used to work really well, and I could kind of get out of that like whirlpool, as I call it, which I borrowed from Jason Street. Um, and uh, but I was I was down uh, lower for longer, um, so I had to I, I had to pivot to something else. Uh, but I didn't want to do this alone. And it got super dark too. Like it affected a lot. It, it, it affects not just your like professional relationships, your personal relationships, uh, how you value yourself, no matter how skilled you are. Like I, I've worked for some really cool companies that I'm very, very proud of. And I have a lot of really great friends who like actually value what I say. But when you're depressed, like you don't, you don't hear that. Like you can't, you want to care, but it just, it doesn't ring true to your brain anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so I realized like I need help and I don't care whether it's therapy. I don't care whether it's medications because they all have their place. But as I go through this, I don't want to do it alone. And I don't want to be quiet about it. Like I'm never going to get security clearance anyway, for other reasons we want to talk about. Uh, but um, which is like a big consideration too. Like I've had a lot of people come into the project I'm doing saying, Hey, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be like some random dude. Uh, because I don't want it to get back. Mm-hmm. But I can't. Like, I don't have anything I have to fear. Like, my community is solid. And luckily, my, my support system is solid. So I can talk about this. And if I can help one other person navigate this, um, just that, that feeling of being worthless and being depressed and not being able to get out of bed, um, you know, let's, let's talk about it, even if it's just my story. Um, so... At Rally Sec, uh, we and it came up randomly. Ben had said, "Hey, like you want to do something about mental health?" And I was like, "Well, that's a sign. Uh, let's do that thing." 
Um, so we came up with about 20 questions, 20, 30 questions. Um, and I, I put a tweet out and I was like, if you are dealing or are helping somebody who's dealing with a, with some, some kind of mental health issue, whether it's like, and I, and I, I lump all of this, uh, you know, whether it's depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, addiction, whatever, something that just screws your head up, um, answer these questions for me and you can send it, you know, you can encrypt it. That's fine. I'm the only one that's ever going to know. You have to put your trust in me, but that's like, that's, you got to trust somebody. Um, and I got a huge response. I mean, by huge, I mean, I thought I wouldn't get five people and I got a, between like 30 and thir- like 30, 35 response. Um, and it was just generalized questions like, you know, who are you? What do you do? What, what's the nature of, you know, your, your mental health issue? Um, how do you cope? Um, so, from that, uh, I uh, uh, spun up a project, um, infosanity.org, and I put these stories on the website just for them to be there. If people want to go there and just read these stories so they can relate, right? So they know I'm not alone in this. That is the biggest thing. Um, and then uh, from there, we have a Slack chat room. Um, people send me an email with their email. I invite them, no questions asked. You don't have to have a real name, whatever. Um, so that's how, that's the long-winded way of how this all started. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been great. We've got a, we've got a huge response. Um, they, they still trickle in from time to time whenever the sun comes up. I mean, then I'll get more emails and people come in. Um, and, uh, you know, I've deferred, the biggest thing that I, I, I want to say is I stand on the shoulders of giants when it comes to this because you have guys like Jack Daniel, um, you have – uh, women, um, Kelly uh, at um, Aloria, who was very open about her issues with this, a, 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 a friend of mine, um, and uh, Jason Street, who has talked who has talked about this at length. Uh, he's got um, his website, uh, ironin.com, I think. Um, so, a lot of us are doing this, and I I found out about that as I'm doing my own thing. So, um, that's what we want to kind of try to continue to do um i'm feeling a lot better these days uh but it's it comes back it comes back around so tying that into security with you know imposter syndrome and burnout which jack daniel has done a lot of great work on a lot of great talks on um keeping that conversation going because eventually die out and like when i'm feeling better like i'm not really thinking about it that much but being there for other people uh so that's what that's what i hope to do um and some, and, and even me, man. Sometimes my website doesn't get updated as much as it should because when you want to help, yeah. But you're still going through it. Like if you don't see new stories on there, it's probably because I got in a down spiral. But I'm, I want to be honest about it and say this shit happens. The best of the intentions gets ruined by this thing you can't control, right? It's just it's there, uh, and it gets exponentially worse with how I cope with things, which is like you know excess and like my thing is eating uh, which i finally got out of control and booze and that kind of thing so uh but yeah man there are there are ways that i i know we'll, we'll start talking about, about how to cope with it uh and the biggest way is just to talk and be in that community and we have a lot of really supportive people uh in our community which i'm finding and it just it makes me fall deeper in love uh with with this thing that we have every every single day so uh yeah by the way i also talk a lot so that's okay. <laughs> so Megan, um, I guess one one thing we should say is that that what works for Danny won't necessarily work for everybody else. Uh, it, it, it's yeah. very much a custom solution. You know, you talk about that. You know, when you're when you're doing pen tests, where they're like, "Oh yeah, we don't use Metasploit anymore. We create our own custom solution because it's more effective for you." So. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I don't know if you've ever had to deal with burnout, Megan, at all. But um, do you? What do you tell people who had to deal with with these kinds of things, and and how do you cope with, you know, when you just say, "Well, I don't want to see a screen anymore." I mean, what do you, what do you got? What do you do to cope with the, that kind of thing? So I have to laugh because yes, I do deal with burnout a lot, and so uh, I also have anxiety, kind of mm. bad. So it's gotten to the point where I realize that like more than like a drink or two and it really triggers my anxiety Mm. um there was that infamous drunk hacker history moment where i drank way too much everybody drank way too much it was awful but 
aside from getting sick on stage, which, you know, high point, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> that triggered a massive panic attack that felt like it lasted all night. Yeah. You know, so that was huge to realize that alcohol does that. But it was great because that's never happened before. And I was surrounded by people in the community that I knew and they were able to help anchor me. So I just wanted to also talk, you know, touch what Danny would said about our community being amazing about that kind of thing. Very nice. So what, what was it? What was the anxiety? Was it the fact that you realized that you had overindulged <laughs> and that you were worried about what other people were going to think about you? And that's what helped trigger the anxiety or is it just built, you know, did yeah. it build up over that? And that's, that's what caused it. I think that's what started it. And then also, so, uh, I was also worried like, Oh, you know, not only did I embarrass myself, I embarrassed my friends, my company, my mm. best friend, you know, Nikita, who was also on the stage. Yeah. So when you're having an anxiety attack, you can't really think your way through it. Yeah. So yeah. whenever someone's like, Oh, you can just talk yourself out of it. I'm like, you've never had an anxiety attack. Right. Have you? Right. Because what happens is it, it's a chemical reaction in your brain when an anxiety attack happens and it's like a surge of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And so you have that fight or flight response mm -hmm. and it just keeps fueling and fueling. So if you don't have a place where you feel safe or someone there to anchor you, it can get really, really bad mm -hmm. very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Yes, I um I yeah. I made a mistake the first Derby Con that I went to where I ended up um uh overindulging. I think I was probably a rookie mistake for 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 myself. You know, I couldn't feel my feet and then, you know, I was, you know, worried about that I was yes, that, that lady at the bar just kept feeding me glasses of wine. Um, but you know, you, you get that where it's like, you, you're almost at the point where your judgment is impaired and then you're like, Oh man, okay. Yes. Maybe I didn't, you know, and then you've got to find some kind of corner to go hide in for a little while, you know, or, and then you're like the next day, you're like, Oh my God, did I make an idiot of myself? You know? And it, you know, in this industry, if you don't have a reputation or it's not, or it's just starting out that can be damaged in an in instant. And people don't forget these yeah. things. We're like big elephants all over the place where we don't forget these things and it will, it, it galvanizes people. So um, it's very much popula a popularity uh, uh, type thing in high school. It's, I, I, I equate it to high school. It's like a big popularity contest, which um, the imposter syndrome thing you guys mentioned is, is, is something too. I mean, um, hearing that people actually listen to the show and it, it bothers me because I'm like, I'm, I'm nobody. I, 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 me and Mr. Betcher. Well, I mean, I'm nobody. Mr. Betcher, he's actually somebody now. He's got something else outside the podcast, but you know, I started with nothing. I was just some guy on the street who said, well, you know, I want to start talking about things. Um, I'm still not somebody, you know, I just, you know, have an audience that, you know, uh, it just feels weird to have people go, Hey, I listened to your show. It still does even to this day. Um, and it, and it, it makes me nervous. Cause I'm like, well, am I, am I what they expected or do I live up to what they expected? If I don't, you know, um, you know, I need to fix that or I need to do something to fix it. Um, you know, we did, me and miss, uh, miss Wu, uh, miss Megan started uh C sec East, which is in Seattle here. And every month I go to that and, I'm always the first person there and I get like such flop sweat because I don't know if people are actually going to show up every month. Yeah. And you know, it's like, uh, do they actually get a benefit out of what we're doing or if it's, um, you know, they just come because of the food. I, I, I don't know. Um, I, so how, do, how do we deal with, sorry, Mr. Butcher. <laughs> I, I said maybe both. What? The and that's okay. Is it okay? Yeah. It's okay. Well, I mean, what point does it get better? Well, we're, it never gets better. Uh. <laughs> well, so the trick is, and I kind of want to touch on this later. I don't, and you can cut me off if we want to touch on it later, but we as, an, as a group, you know, like an industry community, whatever, are really bad about negative self-talk and the story that we tell ourselves about ourselves. 
I what? So so like kind of for example, right? When you're like, oh, you know, nobody really listens to the show. And then when someone tells you that they listen to this show, you're like, what? Why? Oh. When <laughs> why would you tell me that? Right. Or like, why do you listen to it? Or like when someone, oh, this kills me. Every time a customer is like, oh, I follow you on Twitter. I just look at them like, why? Yeah. What's your name so I can block you? <laughs> right. Yeah. Twitter stalking Beca- you. Because, I mean, we tell ourselves, you know, we're just like, oh, we're nobody. Who am I to talk on this? And it feeds into that imposter syndrome, you know, that whole negative self-talk. Mm. So we got to kind of work on that on an individual thing and it's hard dude it it really is and especially because not all motivations or not all the demons feeding the imposter syndrome are the same from person to person like for me mine's mine is informed a lot by the business aspect of things um i have fun stories uh uh, about a company which should rename nameless but it, it gave me fire in my eyes um oh, goodness. They, uh, I actually worked for this company twice. Uh, <laughs> and that was good. And it was my dream job. Uh, actually, I worked for the company they acquired. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, and my dream and my dream gig, like one of my first infosec gigs, and I was like, "Holy shit, I'm at I'm at the game, man! Like it's awesome." And then you know, business happens, and like, "Hey, sorry, man, we got to make cuts." <sighs> You know, first in, last out, that kind of thing. So that makes a hit, especially when you're early in like your uh, developmental stage of security, because everything with us is a fire hose. And it's a little bit relevant now. It, it was even four or five years ago, you had to be like a generalist, not even a generalist, really good at being a generalist. Um, so then you're like, oh my God, like maybe I wasn't good enough, whatever. And then I went back. And then it happened again. They did cuts again. So it's twice. Um, Ouch. And, 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 and this is not to disparage them or whatever. This is just, this is informing the story. So lest I get an email from an old colleague. Or anything, <laughs> girl. Um, but when that happens, and it had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with me being bad or, or out of my job or not knowing enough or whatever. But that's just, the business is very, you know, cutthroat. And it's some dude or some lady, uh, you know, with a spreadsheet and a red marker saying, you go, you go, you go, who don't know you, never, you never reported to them that they are making the business decision. But particularly in our industry, I mean, hackers are hackers. Like we, we are this, whether we have a gig in this or not, it is a lot of how we define ourselves as people as problem solvers, as lovers of curiosity. And when somebody tells you, like, you you can't be here anymore, you have to go and go find something else, that hits you as a person. And that, that so that, for me, it, it informed it. And then, I mean, and then I, I imagine to, a, a, to not that as deep of an extent, um, when you get, like, a bad performance review or just, like, you've got to go through a reorg and now you're doing like some job that you didn't want to do or, or or just whatever, or like, God forbid you lose your job and then, you know, there's a downturn in the economy, like that hits you as a person. And these things cascade and they stack, right? And they don't just slide off. So you have to deal with the increased uh, uh, weight of all of this over an extended time frame. Um, and I think that's how burnout happens. Jack Daniel said it best. He was like, burnout doesn't happen and positive syndrome doesn't happen right away. It creeps. And there are signs and there are you know, road marks that you might not see. And it, it accumulates. So no matter how many like, podcasts that me and my crew do, no matter how like awesome opportunities I have like to come on BreakSec or, or like I've done you know, some work with Squirrel and, and they're like, hey, come do a webinar for us. And like, cool. And I work for a really fantastic company and people like what I have to say. I still sit there going, oh, no, I still don't know enough. When everybody is telling me, no, dude, you're cool. Like, you're in. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter. Um, and it starts to affect you. It starts to affect you a lot. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, so that's how it informed it for me. Yeah. 
Mr. Betcher, you uh, you've been very quiet, so um, you don't appear to have any issues. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you you're, you 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 jumped onto this bandwagon with me about three and a half years ago, and um, you know now you're doing your LogMD stuff, and you know you're starting to get your name out there in 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 the malware world. Um, have you had or struggled with any issues like uh, you know depression or anything like that? No, at, at least I don't, I don't recognize it. I don't, I don't think so. There was a point a few months ago where health started becoming an issue. And I sort of put that almost first, put family and my health first and backed off of what I was doing. Cause I, at least at that point, I recognized it. Cause I was, I was hurting pretty bad mm-hmm. and I had to get better. Um, but it didn't, it didn't affect my full-time job. It just affected somewhat the things I was doing on the side, yeah. which was okay because I knew that I could come back even stronger later. Um, I, I haven't really had an issue with depression, anxiety, that sort of thing. But, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of, a lot of people like me who it, don't get affected by what other people say. I just kind of do my own thing and hopefully I'm recognized for it. And if not, that's okay. The only thing, the only uh, depression or anxiety that I've dealt with in others was somebody who took advantage of that Mm. and, and tried to use that as an excuse not to work, to take extended vacation and things like that. So it puts a bad, a, a really bad, um, example onto this whole thing of depression, which is a serious issue. You know, I, I don't have to go to work. I can only work six months out of the year. And if you say something about it, well, I've got this FMLA, I'll come back at you. You can't fire me. You know, I deserve this and I'm going to cry depression. If you try to do something as a, as a company or as a, you know, a manager, try to come after me because that's um that's not right that's taking advantage of my situation things like that and my question is from somebody who hasn't dealt with someone with real depression that i know of how can i recognize the signs of real depression of anxiety so that i can be that person that anchor for them because i really do care about my peers, maybe I just don't recognize something deeper is going on here that's going to affect uh, that person in the long term if I don't step in and help. That's a that's a good question. Most managers need to understand that too, because you know, um, you know, maybe maybe these uh, maybe we like to hide that kind of stuff, but you know, in our work performance, that that will come out. So, uh, does anybody have any thoughts or ideas about that? So. Well, <laughs> you, oh, thanks. But uh, so what I was going to say was, at least for myself, I'm really bad about when I have a really bad uh, period of anxiety, right? When I feel it flare up or something like that, I try to like tough it out. And I think a lot of us do that. And I just kind of like heads down, I'll try to like Maybe I can work th- harder. If I work harder, I can get through it. Or um, what's really bad is when all of a sudden someone you know who is really talkative goes silent. Mm. And yeah. so that's something I'm really guilty of is when I'm feeling super anxious, I just kind of shut down. You know, I'm just like, okay, I can do these five things. And that's like it. It's usually like eating maybe doing some like the bare minimum for work to get by and get through this sleeping and then like whatever. Right. So that's probably one of the biggest things to keep an eye out for is like a A shift in personality. Right. But some of us are really good at hiding it too. Mm -hmm. Like we don't want to be a bother to our friends. And then also some of us don't want to admit that level of vulnerability. Yeah. 
because it it's a huge thing to be like hey brian my anxiety is really messing with me right now do you mind if i talk to you about it yeah. you know yeah it freaks people out it's hard dude yeah. so it's interesting how anxiety manifests itself um about three months ago i i don't know what was going on um in, in my life at the time but i remember waking up at about i don't know midnight and I had a flop sweat. I was just like sweating from head to toe. And my chest was like, it felt like something was crushing my chest. The first thing I thought it was like, oh, God, I'm having a heart attack and I'm 38, you know. And, you know, I was like, well, let me check my pulse, whatever, whatever, you know. And I, I just let it sit there and I started, you know, calming down and everything. Because I realized that while I was sweating profusely and I got up and I walked around a little bit and it got a little better. And I went in to see my doctor in the checkup and I was like, he's like, if you had any, you know, any medical issues or anything like that. And I was like, well, I had, you know, I was having some chest pains a couple of months ago. And he's like, chest pains? And I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> but they went away. Yeah. He's yeah. like, uh, okay. He's like, you didn't go to the hospital? I was like, well, no, I, you know, I could still breathe and I wasn't dying. And my Fitbit said I still had a relatively good pulse. So I didn't see any real reason to go. And he's like, look, you don't, you don't play with that. No. You know, you don't neglect your health in that respect. Um, you come into the doc. So he, he hooked me up to an EKG and we took an EKG and thankfully I'm not dead and my heart is good. But he said, you know, yeah. you've got some anxiety that you need to, to deal with. And I was like, I don't even know what, what it is that I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with, you know. Um, and so I've, I've started like doing meditation to kind of calm myself, you know, um, um, uh, some of it may have been job related. I don't know. Um, you know, I, a lot, a lot of what affects me is like my insecurity with my job. Cause I, I don't have imposter syndrome. I just have the, I don't see why they keep me because mm -hmm. I've obviously don't have the same skills as everyone else in the group. And I'm feeling like I don't belong there anymore. Um, and I know that's imposter syndrome. <laughs> no, that's just, I don't, I don't. know how I it fit is. in the, or it is. It yeah. Is, uh, it's pretty much the, the definition. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I thought imposter syndrome yeah. was like, well, you know, everybody's like, Oh, you're so great. You're so great. And I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, but this yeah, is like, no, well, that's a part of that's one kind of it. But what you just described is like the most common version. Oh, See, I didn't, I, I don't, uh, my, my schooling was in IT, so I didn't do like organizational behavior like Ms. Wu did. So. <laughs> I'm sure you went through some of this in your, in your classes, right? Did you discuss uh, any organizational psychology or anything like that? So th that's more like therapeutic type stuff. And uh, I messed up enough on my own. I don't need other people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd be like worried to take that much responsibility for other people's feelings and well-being when I'm struggling to take care of my own feelings and well-being. <laughs> right, right. Um, so yeah, I uh, you know I still struggle with the the I guess the imposter syndrome stuff because uh, you know yeah. I always wonder if you know every time I hear that you know new positions are open at my job I'm like okay well okay obviously they're going to replace me because they're hiring three other people and whatever they don't need me anymore they're going to hire these folks and they're just be like eh they don't need this guy anymore and cut you loose. Um, I still struggle with that, even when I don't. Well, I guess I've always had that problem then. So, um, yeah. Wow. Uh, I feel like I need a couch and I need to lay down. And like, <laughs> Maybe I three hundred dollars an hour and stuff. So. Dude, funny enough, those couches actually help. <laughs> it does. They do help. Very cool. All right. So, okay. so job insecurity is one thing. Some people worry about their job. Um, you know. What about the workplace? The workplace can be... Hang on. Sorry, hang on. go ahead, oh, sir. Yeah, he didn't talk about... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please, go ahead. Yeah. The signs. The, the signs. signs. Oh, sure. So, uh, yeah, um, you hit on, on a lot of them, uh, you know, that, that change. So for me, uh, anybody who's known me from, for more than 10 minutes uh, knows I'm, I, I like to talk and, I, and I'm, I can be animated and, like, I've, I love what I do when I find something interesting. Um, I'm just out there. I, I, I used to work in radio for, for a bunch of years. And, um, when I, when I get down, I'll just clam right the hell up. Mm. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of obvious like that. Uh, and, you know, and, but, and at the same time, um, what do we always hear 
about somebody who uh, commits suicide that we don't that that surprises us. Oh, they just seem they seem so fine. Mm. Like no one's going to come out and tell you. Um, and and it's as frustrating as as, as that could be. Um, sometimes there just, there just aren't any. So um, it's just keeping up those relationships. Uh, we have that a lot in this community where, I mean, we only see each other, you know, two, three times a year. Um, and you never really know what's going on uh, in somebody's life. So um, I have found uh, from like my own studies of like social engineering and, and, and studying those principles of like active listening, right? Active listening is just so has just opened up my own ways of like talking to people and really listening to what they're saying. Um, uh, you know, seeing what they post on Twitter uh, and, and seeing how those kind of patterns might change. Um, but yeah, a lot of times you're just, you're not going to know. Uh, some people are more obvious than others and some people want to talk about it and some people don't. Um, that's a really hard question uh, to answer um, because yeah, you're, you're just, you're, you're never going to know, but it, it, you know, like, like you said, it, it's it's going to be those those behavior changes like out of the norm and just trying to trying to keep listening for things that they might be trying to tell you. Mm. Um, you know, like you have a friend who's or like a, a, a coworker who out of the blue says, "Yeah, you know, I just had a bad day," or you know, um, or you would overhear a conversation like, you know, um, try to try to work try, try to work with them. And, and 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 try to you know bring it out of them there there can be clues but a lot of times there's not going to be yeah. uh you just you know uh it's 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 almost harder for the people that we love and 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 who love us and want to see us succeed uh because we're going to sabotage that by not telling them and then they're going to feel even worse because they thought they could have done something to stop it or something to help when there is just you know there's a lot that you just can't do uh, except be there to listen. And the other part of that is when you are lucky enough to have somebody that you, that you can help and that does want, want your counsel or, or wants to vent to you, everybody feels like they have to fill uh, silence. Right. Which is also like another, it's, it's amazing how many principles I see can fall into can fall into this of like those pregnant pauses and, and that kind of thing sometimes it is just listening you don't have to have answers for them right don't pressure yourself to think you have to have answers just be there to listen uh and that's really nine times out of ten man for me that helps like just have myself talking and have somebody like to talk to like you know that that little rubber duck that you have a like a debugging problem that you talk to like it's pretty much the same principle uh but yeah it's it's that's just that it's that thing of just being there and, and listening to somebody. Uh, but no, man, like you're ne- it's never going to be obvious a lot of the times. And, and that's really the frustrating part about it. Yeah. And a lot of times they don't want to be obvious because they're worried that what they're going through is going to be a burden, or mm-hmm. at least for me, right? So mm-hmm. when I'm feeling really anxious or depressed or stuff like that, I clam up because I'm like, well, other people are going through the same thing and if I bug them you know I'm inconveniencing them or I'm making it worse for them and that's not true but it's also hard to convince yourself that it's not true (laughs) or like it's also poor me and my poor problems I I mean I'm (sighs) in an employment field and I get to do interesting things and woe is me because I'm starving in India you know there's that too where you don't want oh my god yes yeah. And 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 the only time that I never feel imposter syndrome is like when I'm depressed. Like I know I'm depressed. Like I'm good at being depressed. I excel at being depressed. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's 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 lessening your own feelings, right? It's it's yeah. saying, I don't deserve to be happy about this, and I and I sure as hell don't deserve to have friends that are going to listen to this. So I'm I'm not, I'm not going to burden them with this. Mm. And you know that. That, that doesn't that doesn't help matters either that just compounds it yeah oh yeah i guess it all it's it all cascades man the the your head is a tricky tricky place 
Yeah, it's a spiral. It you know, and it and it begets Whoa, more yeah. uh, more uh, negative yeah. behavior because you mm-hmm. you close off, then your friends are like, "Well, what's wrong with you?" You know, or you know, and then that that breeds you know shame or additional stuff, and it just you know it it just double downs and, and it causes more problems. The other really difficult thing uh, for people um, that are supporting you know friends that are having problems or whatever, it's it's not easy. Like I, I will, I will take things out on people um, because I'm not thinking straight or I'm angry or, or, or upset. So there's like an irrationality that happens sometimes and it's hard. It's hard on people uh, when, when you're really, when you're really down in it. So that, that also makes yeah. things difficult. Um, you know, uh, especially in a, such a, like uh, a, a, small small field that we're in when you think about it everybody knows somebody else and if this stuff starts permeating into like your 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 public persona and you screw one thing up mm-hmm. miss a con mm-hmm. uh can't fulfill an obligation because you're just too fucking sad or i, I don't know if you guys want to edit that, you can edit that out. <laughs> uh, we, we, we don't have a filter on rally to to to, to yeah. Now there's going to be an explicit uh, tag on their yeah, podcast always, because fun. of you. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then people who aren't your friends and they just know like from your name or whatever, like those few people and then that reputation builds, you know, yeah. and then so there's that risk. But yeah, that, that is like, like that old spiral or, or like I, I referenced the Jason Streets, I think it was his 2015 keynote at Skydog. Uh, he talked, he talked about this a lot. Uh, it was actually that talk that got me mode to get help. Uh, I watched that talk when I was really, really down. I think I was like laying in bed for like the twelfth hour, and I was watching that talk, and I was like, "Man, okay, cool." So, and I, I, I message you all the time for that. Um, but yeah, and then then your reputation suffers, and then you get mm-hmm. we're really good at blacklisting people and saying like, "Damn, yeah. that guy's a jerky. You missed out on this," and you know comes back to listening to, to people you know that, that, that you aren't sitting with so uh it's it's a it's a big big question uh you know to, to look for signs and 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 how to deal with that uh we had a whole separate subset of questions uh for our thing um of people who are just supporting people and all of them want to know how they can help better uh and it's one of the important and difficult questions to answer yeah I figured out why Mr. Betcher is so well adjusted. He came from a development background where he was a god, so <laughs> he, was, you know, he came into security. No, I'm a, you know. I'm a terrible developer. Otherwise, I'd probably be a developer. But uh, oh, is that no. why you couldn't hack it as a developer? So you come into infosec, you're just bringing bringing your trash. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. No, so um, like like most uh, people in infosec, when we feel bad or whatever, we want to feel good again. So we embrace our vices. We begin to self medicate. We, uh, you know, we go to hacker summer camp and we tie one on. Um, you know, everybody probably has a story where they have overindulged. We heard one tonight, and I I have I have also shared one as well. Um, one thing I saw literally today was uh, at DEF CON this year, which we were recording this on June 30th of 2017, but I don't know if this has ever been there before, but uh, somebody posted what is called the Friends of Bill W. Now, um, when I used to go on, when I used to, I still go on cruises a lot. Uh, They have organizations like um, uh, Friends of Bill W., which is uh, for like uh, people who struggle with alcohol addiction uh, or, or drug addiction or whatever because on the ships on cruise ships it, it alcohol is just ubiquitous it's everywhere you can't really get away from it it's in you know it's everywhere so um we're now having an infosec con with another event for people who have issues with alcohol in a place like vegas which is i would say known for its uh, overindulgence um, is this something new? Is this something that has been around before? Yeah, it's been around for a couple of years now. I want to say five. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe they so, just didn't uh, advertise it uh, before. So I think they just called it Al Anon or something like that. You know, it was, okay. it was always on the map and yeah. they like always let it known 
let it be known that the meetings were happening. I actually had to Google what Friends of Bill W was because I'm like, what's this? Is this like a new party? And I'm like, oh, yeah. no, that's cool. That's really awesome. Yeah. I just haven't heard it called that before. So. Well, it was to, it was, uh, I guess it was a way of hiding in plain sight. So um, I, before we started recording, uh, like on cruise ships uh, back in the day, before they, you know, it became more accepted, they had what was called the Friends of Dorothy, which was the LGBTQ uh, people who were on the ship who, you know, were coming to, you know, help cope or, you know, I, I don't know what it was because I, I never went. I just saw it in the ship's itinerary for the day. Um, now they just call it, you know, uh, get togethers with the LGBT uh, people in the, on the ship. Um, friends of Bill W still friends of Bill W because they're I guess there's still a stigma there. I, I I would assume the friends of Dorothy yeah. thing they had was because they didn't want there was a stigma there that it no longer exists in in, in, in many circles. So, um, so we have issues with alcohol consumption and people who have issues with alcohol go to a place that they you know are going to be exposed to that stuff. Um. Do we need as a community to start, I don't say like, you know, like stigmatizing the, the overuse of our overindulgence, but do we need to maybe clean up the image of, of what DEF CON and Black Hat and those things are as, you know, bender weak kind of events where there's a lot of alcohol or maybe we need to, you know, have more options for non-alcoholic related events? Because I know DerbyCon yeah. has Bourbon Con, which you know but that's, that's not what they're known for and i understand that it's not like you're gonna go crazy and, and do whatever but i mean there are events out there that are dedicated just to imbibing of the alcohol we don't need to stigmatize it we just don't need to celebrate it yeah uh, as much as we do sorry um, I, I you wrong turn of phrase yes we don't need oh, to sure. make it forefront right. or celebrate it and um and i say this as somebody who is an avid drinker <laughs> um <laughs> I I, I I I definitely can use it for the wrong thing sometimes. Um, uh, but sometimes I'll just not do it for months um, months at a time. But um, it's fun, right? Like it's 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 a lot of great fun, and there's a lot of great times to be had, a lot of jokes, and it's very sociable or whatever. Uh, I don't think I don't think I mean security or, or anything else. You know, I, I don't think we have to be as proud of it. Uh, as as we are uh, to, to 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 be excessive, um, you know, I, I personally don't see. You know, I mean, n not that you imply that there's anything wrong with like bourbon con or whatever. No, no, there's um, not. But no, there was a there was actually a long thread on Twitter. Uh, Johnny Xmas uh, uh, did about that, and it actually had a little lot. It ended up being a really great conversation about you know having having more you know dry get-togethers and like. Um, you know, some, you know, somebody's got to spearhead that. So yeah, that there should abs there's there, there is always room to have everybody included. Um, so yeah, maybe a, a bigger push. I mean, um, you know, DEF CON, like, I, I think as it is now is such this, this, this gargantuan effort that, you know, a, a lot of these things have to be spearheaded by the people who attend, like, there's that, you know, follow DEF CON parties. There's people that organize their own, you know, their own stuff all the time. So somebody's got to take those reins uh, and, and and be responsible for that. I, I don't know that I would ever hold any con uh, accountable to do that, uh, but we certainly don't need to, like, have an officially sanctioned, you know, blackout week. Yeah. Um, you know, but this, this falls to the community. Like, be, it's literally be the change you want to see. Um, so, uh, like I, I know for my event, uh, at, at DEF CON this year, like there's no, there's no official drinking involved. Like, you know, you go to Hacker Jeopardy or whatever. And, and of course, you know, there's going to be booze and, and, and that's fine. It, it's fun. Um, and I didn't make a conscious effort to not have booze in mind. It just so happens we don't, and we don't need it. And that's fine. So you can feel cool to come there and like, it's not going to be too triggering for you. Like, you know, if you have that kind of problem, so. Um, it's just going to have to be people wanting to be the change or want like wanting to do the change that, that, that they want to see. So I think there's a lot of people who try to push that. I don't know if I would call it responsibility or whatever, but a lot of people would try to push that, you know, <laughs> oh, you know, the Vegas 
week is, you know, full of drinking is because of the cons, but that's not necessarily true, right? I mean, yeah. if I'm honest with myself and I sit and I think about it, every time I've gotten like really, really, really drunk, it's been with a group of friends at a bar, that one exception, <laughs> you know, there's that one exception, you know, uh, on the stage, but nobody really forced me, nobody forced me to drink, right? So it was always me making the conscious effort to be like, yes, I want another one and another one and another mm -hmm. one, right? Yeah. And even like when I presented at DEF CON, you know, everybody's like, oh, you know, first time speakers have to drink, you know, have to take a shot on stage. That's not true. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's not true. And I think they actually prefer if you don't give your first talk blitzed. <laughs> <laughs> it might help with the nerves, but, you know, I think sometimes we try to shirk the responsibility a little bit. And other times, you know, we're so wound up and so hyper-focused at work and at home. And then we get to Vegas and we're with our friends and we're relaxed and, oh yeah, I'll have another one and another one. And that kind of leads to that, you know, kind of blackout thing. And, you know, we joke, you know, we drink to forget because of, you know, the situations at work and that, you know, the stuff that we see our users do and stuff like that. But I've noticed that once, as soon as I told my, a couple of my friends that I'm like, hey, I don't really want to drink at con, maybe one or two a night and that's it people were really good about like keeping an eye out for me because after one or two drinks, it's harder for someone to say no when the yeah. bartender's like, Oh, you want another. Right. Yep. So I've been lucky to have friends that be like, Hey, you said you only want one or two. I'm not mothering you or policing you. But, but yeah, I think that the problem we run into then is, you know, you're, and this is, we just met today. Yeah, yeah. You, you see, you seem capable of saying no. Uh, right. There are those among us that can't do that. Yes, um, absolutely. They want to be part of this thing. They, 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 they are still part of our community, and they're still hackers, and uh, they have, you know, it, it is their illness that that is telling them that if they're around this, they're going to do this. Mm -hmm. and just to have those spaces for them to to make that make that trigger a, a little less like hair trigger right so yeah. oh absolutely uh, you know so and 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 that was an important distinction that i never really thought of uh you know because i'm i'm not an alcoholic um you know it seems like it sometimes but I, I'm, I'm really not because I, I can just stop and not care um but during that thread that johnny started he was like no no, no. he goes i'm not talking about that and he goes i'm talking about those of us who like actually can't say no to it can't right. can't function without a drink yeah right or i've been on the wagon for a very long time and every, every event that we schedule with everybody you know from like all the vendor parties and and all the dj parties and stuff like they're all they're all you know they're all booze fueled and and that's just the way things are and there's not a lot for them to do but they still want to be they still want to hang they're still our friends um, so how do we do that? You know, and, and should there be a, should there be a bigger push by these cons to do something official? Like, yes, we have to be our own change, but should the cons get involved? Like, like they, you know, uh, it, 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 is it their place to, to be, you know, that social change? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's, that's, that's not for me to decide. Yeah. yeah. I think it would be up to the individual cons. Like I think what DEF CON's doing with the friends of Bill W, you know, having mm -hmm. a dedicated room for those people yeah. and, you know, even their friends, because I've heard, you know, they go and support their friends because, you know, it makes it easier for them. Okay. So I, I don't think there should be a huge push because we all see what happens when you try to push conference organizers mm -hmm. to do something, they kind of rebel against it um, naturally. So if we just say, hey, here's an idea and then run with it, if it rings true for your conference or whatever. Yeah. And there's enough sub cons and stuff going on in there. I mean, Tierra cons going on. So, I mean, you know, 
how, you're, are you going to miss yet another event that's going on during DEF CON? You know, there are, you know, at yet another event. If you don't want to go to whatever's going on in the, you know, the main floor or whatever, you've always got options. You know, it's Vegas. Yeah. So you've got tons of other stuff. If you don't even want to go to the InfoSec CON, you can go and, you know, be out in 115 degree heat. So, you know, but there's that, there. there's that fear of missing out though. True. Very true. So that we also have to keep in mind, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's hard. <clears throat> exactly. <laughs> so, so we have so much going on and often we find out, you know, feel that, you know, there's things that are missing in our, in our lives. So me, my office is, well, office and studio. So this is the cleanest it's been in literally a month. And I walk into it every morning when it was messy and all get out. And I'm like, man, I really need to clean this thing. And, you know, the, these kinds of things just pile. And, oh, I haven't been to the gym in a week, uh, you know, whatever. Um, I, I find often that if I'm feeling down, just doing something like going out for a walk or, uh, you know, straightening up my desk, which it does need to be straightened. The floor is perfect. It's just the desk is kind of a mess. But um, these things weigh on me in, in addition. You know, the fact that, you know, I haven't, been to the gym or you know whatever um so what are, what are some coping mechanisms that we can have for when we get down to help us with maybe create a sense of accomplishment to 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 kind of boost our uh you know the 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 negativeness uh, you know and kind of push it away for a while is it small things like you know cleaning your desk or you know um going out for a walk or taking up pokemon go or ingress or whatever to help you know get your mind off of the the normal drudgeries of every day what i mean what what are some of those coping mechanisms that you guys use specifically so um you know for for me at least and this this can help with both burnout and uh, our um, um imposter syndrome is uh, giving back to the community, right? So if you, you know, you know, suffer from a, a really bad case of like, I'm an imposter, I shouldn't be here, whatever, write a talk, write a blog, mentor somebody. Like you need to build your own ego up because, you know, we've been raised and taught to say that having a big ego is bad or blah, blah, blah. No, ego is good. Ego is a survival mechanism. Hmm. So, you know, uh, doing a uh, mentor program like uh, my friend uh, uh, um, at Jimmy Vo. Uh, Jimmy has a uh, mentor program and he spun up uh, a couple months ago and it's doing great, right? So uh, there's that. Um, uh, share the knowledge that you know you do have because when you start to do that, you'll be amazed at how much knowledge you really have. And it's going to be like, wow. Like, I actually know what the hell I'm talking about. Because yeah. the more you actually know, the less you're going to find people saying, oh, no, you're wrong about this. Well, actually, no, you're not, because here's why. And you find that out by writing uh, and um, and uh, just just being able to um, give back. Uh, so that's, that's how I try to combat that. Um, and it does help. Um, and as far as burnout goes, um, do something else. Uh, it doesn't, you know, yes. it's, it's hard. And it gets really hard because my something else is this. It's being in front of a terminal and learning something cool and something new. It's not helping my brain to detach and give it a rest. Yeah. Um, I recently uh, buckled down on, you know, and did like some retail therapy and I bought a PS4 and I just go in Grand Theft Auto and just shoot people uh, that didn't last time yeah. <laughs> um, I say oh, you're on a watch list now buddy oh, my goodness. virtually shoot people yeah vir right virtually right off auto from the watch <laughs> where the <laughs> can't get you no <laughs> that's a lot worse coming out in actual words um but no just turning off right like that requires no critical thought except right. trying to the cops not find you um or <laughs> Uh, you know, just uh, if you have, you know, get a cat, get a dog, uh, get, uh, you know, just do something that's not this. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, my other thing is um, 
um, improv comedy. That's I started doing that as a way to study social engineering because uh, I, I heard a, the panel talk at Derby from like Grifter and and uh, Deviant and those guys. Like, that's a great idea. And I have an improv group like down the street, you know, from where I live. And so I started taking those classes just to get out of my head. It started being tied to what I do. But as you get more into it, like you learn what you learn about it. And then uh, you're an improv and you're learning that kind of stuff. So cool. do something. Else. Uh, cool. But that's, that's my ways. Uh, yeah. What do you deal? Yeah. And I just want to emphasize what you were saying, like do something else. That's so important. And so Brian kept, uh, referencing my twitter rant so it wasn't really a rant it, it was a rant. like <laughs> diatribe no diatribe i guess but yeah monologue. So chris, right monologue <laughs> chris sanders wrote a really great post I called the it. cult of passion yeah and so that's what like kind of started the whole thing is he was like you know we're so passionate or we like to say that we're passionate about InfoSec and our jobs want us to be passionate and blah, blah, blah. And no, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for us to be curious and for us to be interested in what we're doing, but passion leads to burnout, right? Right. Passion is not sustainable. So uh, kind of what I do, so I do a couple of different things. I started a cooking blog so that's been fun. I love to cook. I take really pretentious pictures of my food and I post it on Instagram. Oh, really? I even, oh my God, Brian, I actually bought a camera just to take pictures of my food. Shut up. <laughs> I'm going to try to take, I'm going to start taking pictures of other stuff. Oh, okay. and I like, I justified it like, oh yeah, it's a family camera for vacations that I don't take. You should get the uh, the new food book that Alton Brown did. He, you know, he's got his camera dude. You know, he was laying on a bed eating fries and stuff. You should do like camera <laughs> pictures with uh, with you and M. You know, doing that stuff. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so like cooking, I love to cook and come up with new recipes that are healthy because otherwise I'm going to eat crap and feel uh, right. like crap. Right. So by cooking and doing this, I'm also tricking myself to eating better. Yeah. yeah. Right. So <clears throat> mental health is really tied to gut health. And a lot of people, like there's a saying that, you know, um, your stomach is your second brain. Right, right. So the reason for that is they found that there's a lot of the same um, like gut flora or not flora, but like a lot of the different receptors and stuff in your brain that are also present in your gut. Mm. So, you know, when you feel anxious, and your stomach kind of like knots up and you get like nervous and you feel like you got to poop or something, you know, <laughs> or you're going to throw up or mm -hmm. whatever. It's going to come out one way or the other. Yeah. That's why. Right. So I'm like, okay, so if I start taking care of the mental stuff, I should also start taking care of, you know, what I actually eat because it's tied together. And I started noticing like, oh, when I eat this, I feel bad about myself or I feel worse or sluggy or yeah. whatever. So that's one thing to do. And then um, I also cross stitch, which is a really freaking type A hobby to have in yeah, case same. you didn't know. So it's like pixel art, but with thread. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pixel art. So yeah. 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 My, so that's my, my been pretty fun. My that stuff. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just creative outlets are also good because we're, most of us like really rely on our left brain. Mm. So to kind of to improv, improv is another great example of creativity that doesn't involve any kind of like putting pen to paper or yep. stuff like that, you yeah, know? Right, exactly. And it really gets you uh, out of your head and into that moment. Um, mm -hmm. which also, uh, I, I'm writing a talk right now of uh, parallels between improv comedy and um, SE. Because nice. there are a lot uh, that I've discovered. Um, and that goes into that active listening. Like you have to be yep. in the moment, yep. like listen and respond. Yes, and. Um, and if you're doing this and you're doing scenes and you're just being stupid and being funny, uh, two hours in, you're like, wow, what was I What was I upset about, you know, earlier today? Yep. Um, and it gets tricky because your friends don't want to go at all and then you stay home and eat Cheetos. Uh, but, you know, if you take the step out that door, if you find something that's, that's going to be fun, uh, that, in, that, that involves, like cooking like 
and paying attention to details, right? Like use the things that, that you make be good not doing your job. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Oh, and also reading. I love to read fiction. So kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, also video games. So I love murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so yeah. There you go. There's my weird soundbite, yeah. right? So yeah. I love, like, the more screwed okay. up the murder yeah. is, the more about it I am. Uh-oh. Sometimes I just shoot a grenade into a bunch of cars so everybody sets on fire. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the book, I mean, so I've started, like, I blog about the food, right? So I also have like, at the end of the month, I post, this is what I'm reading. And I'm like, oh, this is good, but there wasn't enough murder. Yeah. <laughs> Body count was way too low. Yeah. Right, way <laughs> too low. Yeah. But, wasn't too enough. Nope. Yeah. But then video games, I usually do uh, action RPGs. So like, mm-hmm. I've been, we're on our second playthrough of Persona 5, which is a Japanese RPG. And then, Borderlands is like my favorite. Borderlands and like the Bioshock. Okay. And and the important thing about this is to tell yourself it is okay to do this. One yes. of the things that I suffer from is that if I am not constantly learning something new, if I am not, you know, advancing my skill set in something tech related, I am failing or I am yep. not going as fast as I need to go. No, man, it is, you just stop. It is okay to sit and watch Big Brother for two hours. Yeah. That, that's relevant because there's a two hour premiere. That was <laughs> I didn't right. feel bad about watching. Well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's not trash. Well, that's not the way trash should be. I watch this. One I'll admit to. Um, but it's okay. Like, it's okay if your couch is just comfortable. Uh, you probably need it. You know, that's your brain telling you, like, your brain screaming, don't go back into the room. Like I, I work remotely. So mm-hmm. which also compounds the issue of my office is in my home. Yep. Right. So it is hard and near impossible to untie your brain from that. Uh, and I know a lot of us work remotely. Um, and that's a whole other skill set in and of itself. And then when you, when you tie yourself so close to your work and your work is in your house and it's just not there, right. It's, it's hard. Um, okay, it's okay. You can do that. It's uh, you know, and then there's the excess of it. Like you get to stop at some point and go back to work. Uh, but yeah. there's you know, there's a balance. But it's okay to shut off and just do nothing. Yeah. Yep. Mr. Betcher, do you have any uh, any thoughts or suggestions about uh, you know, um, you know how to how to make no how, how to keep this, yourself uh, going crazy. This- this podcast is for me, right? So I can, it, it, it'll help me. Like why I don't suffer from mental health, at least that I know of, but hopefully I can recognize the, the signs, yeah. right? And, and uh, be there to help, right? Because I yeah. consider myself a good listener. I don't try to interrupt people and, and tell my own story based on some key word that they said. Yeah, you know, and, and, I'm I'm there to listen to your point of view, things like that. Yeah, yep. And, and 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 just so you know, I mean, and you, you said a really key phrase right there: be here, be there to help. Being there is helping. Mm-hmm. Like you don't, there's no, there's no follow on action after being there. Just being there is helping. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then also, I think it's important for us to also touch on the fact that sometimes hobbies aren't enough. And you're going to feel really crappy and really down and it's okay to go to counseling or therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is yeah, it's like, that, but yeah. there's this weird stigma around mental health and going to get help. And I'm totally a hypocrite because <laughs> I, I should probably have a therapist, but I don't. And I have a lot of respect for people who are like, Hey, I can't handle this on my own. And that's okay. Yeah. Yep. You know, so yeah. there's a lot well, of different I, ways yeah. that you can find therapists. You know, you can Google like uh, best therapists in my area. Uh, Psychology Today has this mm-hmm. way to search for therapists in your area. Or and there's uh, the difference between psychiatrists and psychologists and yes. meds or no meds and that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, because different types of therapy work for different types of people. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Maybe no, just going like to Massage Envy would be, you know, something that's relaxing that you could. My use. wife has a, yeah. My wife has a membership. Spa <laughs> day, you know, have a spa day. Yeah. 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 yeah so, speaking of taking care of yourself, I, the only thing I can think of uh, for for myself is, um, and, and this is hard for people who travel a lot is is sleep. Get. Mm-hmm. Get a good night's sleep. Get some, you know, get, yes. try to get as much sleep as possible. If you're flying into some place, don't stay out, you know, late, you know, try to get in there and get it and get some sleep. Cause uh, I've noticed that sometimes when I go three, four days in a row where I'm only getting a couple hours or three or four hours of sleep by that third or fourth day, I'm like, I can't think straight. Uh, you know, my job, you know, my, 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 my thoughts process suffers. I can't, seem to get things started at work or you know i get easily distracted the you know i get i go to bed i get you know six to eight hours of sleep that next day and i'm like wow what happened it's a great day you know everything you, your mental state is is often um you know uh, affected by the sleep or lack of so um try to get Absolutely. as much sleep as you can especially if you are in a you know, in a down moment, you know, that will, that will help you. I mean, you may not want to get out of bed anyway, but you know, try to get sleep when you, when you can. So. Absolutely. You know, we didn't uh, talk much about traditional infosec in this case, but I think mental health is, is, you know, if you don't take care of yourself, you know, the infosec part is going to suffer. So I'm, I'm really glad we had this discussion. Um, I would welcome people to, uh, reach out to uh, to the show and to our to our guests here to um, you know talk about uh, you know open a dialogue start start keep talking about this share your own experiences you know maybe maybe we've ex- you know inspired somebody to you know open up if they're if they're you know silently suffering um, and uh, if they are you know please don't uh, don't do so alone reach out to uh, myself or miss Wu or uh, Danny or, or somebody and just talk about it because it's uh, it, it will continue to affect you if you don't talk about it so and, and that's uh, and and that's why we start our slack channel it's um, uh, at, at um, org. Um, it's small uh, there's not a lot of people I mean, there's you know, 20 30 people but there are people who are both the deal and people are just just there to help um sometimes it's really active sometimes it's not but that's just the nature of things so uh we created it so you have that spot you you i am giving and just a little spot on the interwebs where you can go and talk to people who are dealing with the same professional challenges you are and some of the same personal challenges um and and it's also important to emphasize because I had like one person who was like, "Oh, you're you're over, you know, statisticalizing or whatever." I'm not even a word. Um, that we have like a higher preponderance of this. No, you. But you start where you live, right? Like I live here. This is my community. This is my people. This is where I'm starting. I'm not saying we have a higher rate of this. I'm not scientists. I'm not saying that we're special snowflakes. This is where we start. Yep. And if we talk to each other, that's a step. Yeah. And sometimes that's just the first step is, is the biggest one. I, I would counter by saying we don't yeah. want it to become a bigger thing. You know, no, we, we can don't. head this yeah. off. We can be preventative. We don't have to be reactive or, or in a firefighting situation where the whole industry gets messed up by in, you know, in some way. So if we can head this off or have coping mechanisms or have a community that is more supportive than, um, you know, than, you know, loner, then uh, I think we'll be better off. So Absolutely. right on. I agree. Well, um, Miss, Miss Wu, how would people, uh, if they wanted to discuss this stuff, uh, you know, their mental health or, uh, you know, InfoSec in particular, if they're looking for, uh, you know, somebody to, you know, help strategize their CIS benchmarks, how would they get a hold of you? <laughs> um, probably the quickest and easiest way is on Twitter at Totenkoff. Um, I respond to that the quickest. Okay. All right. So I'm always on Twitter. I'm usually just lurking right. or going on long diatribes about whatever like okay. <laughs> interests Ugly me babies. that day. Ugly, Ugly babies. babies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the on. worst. Well, yeah. well I, am, I knew I was fine. I knew you looked familiar. I, <laughs> I, you, but I followed you a long time ago. 
Infosec Aww. is like that. It's like we don't know people in in real life until we we see their Twitter handles, and it's like, oh right, you're rando, yeah. Or Deca- um, anyway, so Danny, how would people uh, uh, get a hold of you if they wanted to discuss well, mental I'm, health issues? The absolute easiest way is I'm just I'm just a Twitter addict. Uh, I've been for a long time. It's uh it's at D A K A C K I um and i'm just that's that's me i that's i love twitter uh and i I find it's probably the best medium for for us to talk to each other Uh, my Mm -hmm. dms are always open um so you know i don't have to follow you i don't don't do anything like that um just reach out directly um infosanity.org is always there There there's stories up there there's some resources up there um and then if you want you know the slack channel uh there's directions right on the website uh, about just email me um, and we'll get you an invite. Uh, so yeah, I'm literally always on Twitter. But it's probably a problem by now. Cool. Yeah, we have a we have a links and uh, to everybody's Twitter handles and to infosanity.org and uh, Jimmy Vo and at and my hacks who works with Jimmy for with the mentoring stuff. All that stuff is in our show notes on there. Um, so uh, Mr. Betcher, last but not least, uh, how would people get a hold of you if they wanted to discuss? Uh, log md or your prescient uh podcast last week about pet well not last week but about petya that came out before petya actually came out yeah it wasn't about petya but um or not petya <laughs> as as the, i guess the or real not, yeah. the real one was called um but yeah it's just about ransomware in general uh you can hit me up on twitter at betcher pwned right on excellent um yeah, so uh, you can find Miss uh, Miss Berlin, who uh, wasn't here this week, and she was very much missed because uh, she would have definitely been able to uh, add to this conversation, I think. Uh, you can find her at InfoSister, I-N-F-O-S-Y-S-T-I-R on Twitter. Uh, she's also very active on our, um, our uh, Slack channel. So um, you can find me um, on Twitter at Brian Brake, B-R-Y-A-N-B-R-A-K-E. Uh, the official podcast is at BrakeSec, uh, B-R-A-K-E-S-E-C. Oh, um, yeah, go talk, uh, go see Danny uh, at, on RallySec. He's at RallySec, uh, RallySec podcast. Uh, listen to that um, after you've listened to ours. Um, listen to ours first, but then listen to theirs. It's cool. It's You're cool. going to learn a lot more on breaks. I highly <laughs> doubt it. Everybody is special in their own way. Um, We're pretty much like the video version of shit posting. Oh, well. Oh, nice. Wow, okay. Yeah, we admit it. It's fine. Uh, that's just what we're there for. Self-actualized. You're self-actualized. Yeah, we, we serve a purpose. That's Not right. a, a grand one or a noble one, but we serve something. No, nah, that's cool, man. That's cool. Um, so um, we're doing all kinds of stuff. Our web application security class with Miss Sunny ended um, uh, on uh, like Monday the 28th. Uh, that went really well. Uh, our next one is going to be Mick Douglas doing a P- PowerShell for uh, incident responders and blue teamers. Uh, if you've never used PowerShell before, we're going to go through that. It's going to be a six-week course uh, on Monday nights. Um, you can join us uh, on uh, at the $20 level on our Patreon. We'll sign you up for that. So if you go to uh, patreon.com forward slash BDS underscore podcast or look in the show notes, Uh, You can sign up for the class, and if you can't go to the class, we are going to make the videos available to you right after the class is over on our YouTube channel, Um, so you can join at the $10 level for that. Um, We've got quite a few people on there already signed up, so um, um, slots are really going fast, so if you are interested in learning PowerShell, uh, blue team type stuff, uh, frameworks, you know, just basically how to use PowerShell, um, you know, sign up for that class, so... Um, speaking of our Slack channel, uh, you can sign up and go over to our Slack channel at, uh, uh, breaksec.signup.team. We have a bot that will, uh, automatically sign you up. We are very active on our Slack channel. Um, we have a lot of people on there talking about all kinds of different things. We have a job board. We have a leadership board that, uh, people like, um, um, uh, who we got? Mr. It's Byer. Endless. Who? It's endless, man. It is endless. Yeah, we have a malware channel. We have an OSINT channel. We got some pen testing stuff. If you are interested in anything or everything, uh, we have a Python and automation channel for scripting stuff. We even have a random channel where you can just, you know, well, it's like, a water like, cooler for like minded, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Dan, <laughs> like Danny said, you know, we have a random one for shit posting. So if you want to go and do some rando stuff in there, um, 
you know, we don't have a lot of rules, so, um, you know, just be nice to one another. Don't be dick. And, uh, you know, keep the politics out of it. So that's the, the really the only rules we have about the, the, the Slack channel. So um, we also have our CTF club. We're still doing that. So uh, we do that on Tuesday nights. Uh, and our book club is still going on for the next couple of weeks. We're doing Defensive Security uh, Handbook with uh, Miss Berlin. Uh, we, we have two sessions, one for the U.S. and one for the Euro folks in Asia, um, Tuesday morning around noontime Pacific. So uh, a lot of stuff going on over here at the BreakSec World Headquarters. Uh, Megan, Danny, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I'm, I'm glad we had this talk. Um, this is it's so much fun, man. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to be uh, one of probably the best uh, podcasts of our year. So. Oh, Oh shucks! No, I mean, I mean it. We have every year we have ready. podcasts. We're like, man, that was really good podcast. And this is a this is going to be one of the ones that I mentioned when people are like, hey, which podcast do you think we should listen to first? I'll be like, this one, and any of the ones with Hector Monsieur in it. Uh, you know, so <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, this is this was awesome. So um, it was great. Um, can I, can I make a quick plug for our uh, DEFCON contest? Yes, please. DEFCON contest. Yeah, Amanda would have said something otherwise. So, yes, please. Whose slide is it anyway is uh, our official DEFCON contest. We will be in track four uh, Friday, Saturday, and I think Sunday morning for our hangover edition, which goes all Thanks. Exactly <laughs> nice. the way of not like alcoholizing everything. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be uh, starting at 8 o'clock Friday and Saturday, and it's basically – um, we make the slides. Uh, they could be actual slide decks from somebody. Uh, like they're pretty much half and half actual decks that you have to kind of riff on and just randomize uh, PowerPoint ship hosting. Um, and you come up and we have uh, sponsors from uh, Hack5, Trusted Sec, uh, SE Inc, and uh, Stitchery Hacks and Milton Security have all got a whole bunch of prizes. Um, so you can sign up at, uh, at improv hacker, uh, for a spot. And we're also going to pick people from the audience too. Uh, it's going to be a great time. We got some surprise guests. Uh, Jack Daniel is going to be there. Malware Jake's going to be there as guest judges. Uh, it's going to be a really awesome time. So come and hang out with us at DEF CON. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, go, go to DEF CON, um, you know, watch the black hat videos that iron geek are going to put up if you don't want to spend this grill for that. Um, but yeah. yeah, um, I, I probably will try to go to DEF CON next year, maybe not black hat, but, uh, see if the company will pay for me on that. So, all right. <clears throat> well, um, that was it for, uh, this week on breaking down security from the world headquarters here. Um, we all want you to stay safe. Uh, be nice to one another and uh, and have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. That was really creepy. Bye bye, Mr. Betcher. <laughs> I liked it. Bye bye. I mean, we were talking about murder and stuff, so it works. Murderousness. It totally. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Murderousness. Yeah. Well, oh, wow. love murder. Great. <laughs> All right. You're favorite. still recording, so cut that out. Put it at the very intro beginning. That's type, right. And I love murder. People will be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. Oh, Don't man. want to share a room with her. <laughs> Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for having me on, man. This was a lot of fun. Uh, yes. This is one of one of my highlights. Yeah. Like of ever. Yeah, you definitely. Uh, you, if you're a DerbyCon, please please find us. Um, we'll be there doing oh. training beforehand, so um, the the hotel won't be fully full. So we'll find one another at break time or whatever. Oh. I, I already visualized in my head about where I'm probably going to run into. It's going to be like right in the lobby, probably near the bar. Uh, I'm bar, yeah. You. I'm just going to just bear hug the shit out of all I'll walk, I'll <laughs> yeah. walk through. The, I'll walk through the front door and there'll be shining, you know, like a light behind him. He'll be coming down the escalator. He'll be like, oh, I don't like. Don't bear hug I, DA though. Oh, yeah. oh, I, I got him a schmoo real good. <laughs>
yeah. <laughs> that was the first time like me and Tony actually ever like saw each other face to face. Yeah. Uh, and I saw him and he saw me. And I was just like, come here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just picture like a warm and fuzzy. Are you guys familiar with uh, the labyrinth? I just picture like Hoggle where he's yes. like, Don't touch me, don't kiss me, don't Yep. <laughs> no, he held back. It was oh, okay. mostly. Yeah. Did he linger? Did you respect the double tap? Oh yeah, there you go. Double oh tap. no, I held on. Oh, lingered. You lingered. It was like fist on the back, and it was like that. Because after eight <laughs> seconds, you start making cortisol, so you start making a connection. It's one of those connection hugs. Yeah. 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 Uh oh. I, I like I, that. I, 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 I like that. <laughs> no, those are patented Tony hugs. Nice. Very nice. nice. Mm. We have this ongoing running joke. So he actually, uh, I mean, he lived in Maryland for a while. But he took a road trip because he wanted White Castle with his wife. Right. Right. So like, and White Castles are only in very certain portions of uh, of the country. I happened to have one 15 minutes away from my house, and it didn't dawn on me that would be the closest one to him. He was literally 15 minutes from me, and now we just we make White Castle jokes all the time. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, that loud. 